Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to our today's lesson, which we will be discussing electrical conductivity in solids. Remember the program is still manifested online classes. If you remember in our previous lesson, we discussed or we defined three important terms. The first one was electric current. And we say that electric current is flow of electrons. And again, we say that electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. The second term was a conductor. And we say that a conductor is a substance that allows electric current to pass through it. And we give examples of conductor, conductors which included metals like aluminium, zinc, copper, sodium, all those are metals, and they are conductors of electricity. The other substance which also conducts electricity, though it's a non-metal, is graphite. And again, we are going to learn in this lesson why they are able to conduct electric current. The third term was a non-conductor. And we say that a non-conductor is that substance that does not allow electric current to flow through it. And we give examples of rubber, plastics, and wood. And the assignment I left, we're supposed to distinguish between a conductor and a non-conductor while giving examples in each case, that I hope that you've done that. In this lesson, we are now discussing electrical conductivity in solids. Electrical conductivity in solids. And the questions we need to ask ourselves, are all solids conductors of electricity? Are all solids conductors of electricity? We are going to, to see that. And in this electrical conductivity in solids, we are going to have an electric circuit and determine whether the, the substances or some of the substances which are able to conduct electric current. And I will have the circuit. That is our circuit. And this circuit we are now going to, remember this is, these two are crocodile clips. They are just used to hold the substances being tested. This is the bulb. The function of the bulb here is to show whether the electric current is flowing when the electric circuit is completed. So that's the function of the bulb, to show whether there is flow of electric current when the electric circuit is complete. Then this is the power source. The power source, in this case, you are getting the power from the dry cells. And in this power source, that this power source, the terminals, the positive and the negative terminals, are all shown by, by strokes. If you, look, you see, they are, they are strokes. And the long stroke, that is usually the positive terminal. So the long stroke is a positive terminal, while the short stroke, that is a negative uh, terminal. So I'm talking about this stroke. The stroke, you can see the stroke is long. This one is short. So the short one, that is a negative terminal, while the long one, that is the positive uh, terminal of that power source. Therefore, we are now going to test various substances at this point and see whether they are going to conduct electric current. And if they conduct electric current, then the observation will be the bulb will light. If they, if they are conductors, the bulb will light. If they are not, the bulb will not light, showing that there is no flow of electrons in 
that setup. Some of the substances we are going to test for electro uh, for conductivity. Uh, this include substances like sodium, aluminium, This is we test for those substances for electric or for electrical conductivity. So if we connect this, maybe each of those substances at this point, there is a substance being tested. So we are now going to repeat this procedure using the sodium, aluminium, magnesium, zinc, graphite, plastic, rubber, all of them, and see whether they are able to conduct electric current. If we start with sodium, then again, we expect. Remember again, previously we have said that all metals are conductors of electricity. Therefore, if we connect sodium, aluminium, magnesium, and zinc, those are metals. And therefore, we expect the bulb will light. We expect the bulb will light. And the reason why the bulb will light is because these substances are conductors of electricity. And the particles which are responsible for that electrical conductivity, we say they are delocalized electrons. Delocalized electrons are the particles responsible for electrical conductivity in metals. Therefore, sodium, aluminium, magnesium, zinc, all of them are having the localized electrons. Again, when we connect this circuit at this point with graphite, we realize that graphite also conducts electric current. Though graphite is a non-metal, it is just carbon. Carbon is an element in group four of the periodic table as we learned in the chapter chemical families and patterns in properties. So being an element in group four of the periodic table, then it is a non-metal. And you know that non-metals do not conduct electricity because they lack the localized electrons. But for graphite, graphite also has the localized electrons in its structure. Therefore, Graphite, just like the metals, also has the localized electrons and it also allows the flow of electrons or it allows the flow of electric current through it. It allows electric current to pass through it. Therefore, when you connect this circuit with graphite, we also expect that the bulb will light to show that there is flow of electric current through that substance and therefore that is why the bulb lights if you connect some substances like plastic rubber some plastic and rubber we expect that the bulb is not going to light on those the reason why the bulb is not lighting or will not light it is because these substances do not allow electric current to pass through them they do not allow electric current to pass through them, and therefore, the bulb will not light. These ones are non-conductors. Plastic, rubber, wood, all those are non-conductors. They do not allow electricity to pass through them, or electric current to pass through them. And again, when you talk about delocalized electrons, delocalized electrons. For the metals, there are those electrons in the outermost energy level when we write electrical, when we write electron 
configuration or electron arrangement. Those are now the ones we are calling the localized electrons. Like if we write the electron configuration of sodium, the electron configuration will be 28, 281. If it's about aluminium, then the configuration will be 283. These are electrons we call the localized electrons. That those electrons, they are moving throughout the structure of that metal. When they move throughout the structure of that metal, then they are delocalized. They are called delocalized electrons. And these are now the electrons which are now conducting electric current. Therefore, the particles responsible for electrical conductivity in metals and graphite are called delocalized electrons. And I've told you that delocalized electrons are just electrons in the outermost energy level when you write electron configuration or electron arrangement. Therefore, that is how uh, conductivity looks like in solids. Not all solids are good conductors of electricity. Some are good conductors, while others are not. Examples of those that conduct electricity include sodium, aluminium, magnesium, zinc. Those are some of the substances which conduct electricity. Graphite also conducts electricity. There are those ones, again, which do not conduct electricity, and these include plastic, rubber, wood, stones, all those do not conduct electricity. And therefore, that is now what happens in this case. I told you that the function of the bulb is to show there is flow of electric current, there is flow of electric current when the circuit is completed. That is the function of the bulb. And the function of this power source is to force or to make the electrons move or it's, it is offering the, the, the driving force to move the electrons from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And therefore, we expect now the electrons will flow in this direction. They are flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal through the circuit. And that is how you realize that these ones, either they conduct or do not conduct because the electrons are now moving in that direction. I hope you get that very well. Therefore, know the function of the bulb, know the function of the power source, and again, know some of the examples of those substances which conduct electricity, and again, the particles responsible for electrical conductivity in those substances. So that is how uh, metals conduct. So the atoms of these metals are closely packed together. When these metals are closely packed together, then they have those electrons in the outermost energy level. Those electrons, we are calling them delocalized electrons, and these are the ones which are flowing throughout the structure, conducting electric current. And that is what happens. That brings us to the end of our lesson today. But I will leave you with this assignment. The assignment is state the particles responsible for electrical conductivity in metals. State the particles responsible for electrical conductivity in metals. Ensure that you've answered that before you meet in the next lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be discussing the electrical conductivity in molten substances. See you in the next lesson. Thank you.